Okay, well, we're sitting down here with Victor Martinez. He's a fourth year seminarian here at SJB. And uh, Victor, can you just tell me, uh, how did you end up in seminary? What's, what's your story? Yeah, well, firstly, thank you for having me here, John. Um, so I was born in Pune, India, and I was adopted when I was two years old. Uh, my mom, Winnie, and my father, Tony, and uh, was born, then they brought me over to Chicago, Illinois. And my father passed away about a few months after that from a brain tumor. So then it just became my mom and I. My mom was a faithful Catholic. She brought me to Mass every weekend. Um, and just that, that was like a, just a base for me to continue on. In, maybe I was on five, six years old, we met these Carmelite nuns over at a parish about you know, 20 minutes away. And my mom was like, let's go visit them. Why not one day? And so we went and we got to talk to them. And then like once a month, twice a month, we would go into that parish and go to Mass and then go get dinner with those sisters at the convent. And during that time, you know, they, I was five, so they would, you know, be like, oh, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said some weird things. There was like, <laughs> one time I said, I want to be a garbage truck driver so I can drive a big truck, or I want to work at a gas station so I can eat all the candy in the world. But one day, um, so this was around, you know, when JP2 was uh, dying, mm. and he was all over the news. I didn't really know what was happening, but I just remember seeing this guy, John Paul II, on the news. And then they asked me that question. Oh, what do you want to be? I said, oh, I want to be Pope. And they all <laughs> laughed at that. You know, it's sisters. And, and then they just ran with that. So every time we'd come back, you're like, oh, are you ready to be Pope? You ready to be Pope? And I'm young, so I'm like, I don't know. What, what, what? Pope? Hello? <laughs> so fast forward. Um, they continued to ask me that. And it really came to me one day. I was like, well, if one wanted to be a Pope, what does he have to do? And I kind of like went down the list, bishop. And then I got to priest. And I was like, oh. I know priests, I see them every weekend. So I started asking my mom all these questions. She was like, no, 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 go, go ask the priest, go ask the pastor. And I was like, no, I don't wanna do that, that's scary. But there was one day where she was a sacristan and I was all the serving. So this is now around fifth grade, sixth grade. And she finished doing her sacristan duty before mass, so she went to go pray. And I was in the sacristy just, you know, chilling. You know, fifth grade, I'm not thinking much about it. And the associate pastor comes down. And him and I just start talking about, talking about stuff. Uh, I was playing basketball at the time, so he was talking a little bit about basketball. And then kind of out of the blue, he was like, have you ever thought about priesthood? And in my head, I screamed, yes, yes, I am. But out loud, I was like, no, no, not one bit. But I didn't have a good poker face at the time, so he saw right through me. And he was like, well, whether you are or you aren't, uh, I want to tell you something. And basically what he told me was, every time the priest during the consecration lifts up the bread and the wine and says the words of Jesus, ask God, is this what you want me to do for the rest of your life? I was like, whoa, never, that never occurred to me. I never, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I started doing it. And at the time, I didn't know the words to put to it. But now, being in my fourth year in seminary, I, I, I can say what it was. I didn't get this like, yes, I didn't see the bush on fire like Moses. But I got this, this peace in me. I was like, yeah, let's just give it a shot. Wherever, whatever happens, let's just go for it. So I continued doing that uh, through our grade school. But then fast forward to seventh, eighth grade, girls start becoming an attraction. And in high school, uh, I really, I left the faith. Um, I wouldn't say I was an atheist or anything, but I did not want to go to church anymore. Mm -hmm. I only went because my mom told me to. And I was like, oh, I should my mom it's my mom right? you, gotta, mm -hmm. you love your mother so I was like okay mom I'll go but I would go and I really, really wouldn't pay attention you know the, as soon as the homily came I would be like playing with my thumb or something mm -hmm. wouldn't pay attention but the Lord continued to work with me and he worked with me even though I was not willing to work with him or I didn't want to acknowledge him mm -hmm. so there was this thing in Chicago called Quigley Scholars and it was the opportunity for young high schoolers who were kind of thinking about the priesthood to go meet the college seminarians or the guy, major seminarians, depending on where you lived in the city. And I lived on the south side of Chicago, so I was closer to the college seminary. So my associate pastor was the one who told me about this. And at the time, I was like, I just want the money. I mean, it was a scholarship off of my high school, and I was like, yeah, I'll take the money. But the Lord was working through that, um, through those experiences that I, that I had. 
and seeing the, the seminary, especially the college guys, how they wore their faith on their shoulders and they were like proud about it and, mm-hmm. and just the intellectual uh, that these guys were like striving for, I was like, they have something that I want. But I would go back to high school and be like, oh, forget about it. I don't care about that anymore. But the Lord just kept working and working. And so uh, junior year, I was playing soccer and I got injured that summer. And um, everything that was like, I put my identity in was gone. Mm. So all I had was the Lord, but I didn't know that yet. And I went on this retreat called Kairos. And that just changed my life. Um, there was a brother who worked with us uh, at, at the high school, an Augustinian brother, and he just showed, he, he brought me back to the Lord. And I was able to go to confession, and we had adoration, and the Lord just came flooding back into my heart. And we had this thing called uh, Kai High, and I was on it. And the Lord just showed me how he was working with me throughout, throughout those years when I thought I left him. Mm-hmm. He was still there right next to me. And so, uh, end of junior year, I was like, okay, let me start taking this seriously, this kind of vocation. So, I was like, okay, Father, Father Mark Augustine was the vocation kind of director at the time. Mm-hmm. And I got to talk to him and, you know, he was like, yeah, let's give this a shot. And he gave me the application. And during this time, I started putting more effort into my quickly scholar time. When I would go see the college seminaries, I'd be like, hey, you know, I'm actually going to take this seriously. What can you guys give me? give me advice you know mm. and they were just full 100 percent. just gave me you know what what i needed what i didn't know the beautiness of seminary and the hard parts of seminary mm-hmm. right? they showed it all and i was like hey god i'm gonna trust in you i don't know where you're gonna go and now i'm here in minnesota i didn't know that at the time but i was like <laughs> where, where are we gonna go but i was ready you know i felt like i was in the roller coaster kind of going up mm-hmm. and i was like okay let me just put my hands up and see where the lord wants to go mm-hmm. and then you know, uh, spring semester of my freshman year, so this is 2019, Cardinal Supich comes in and he tells us we're closing down St. Joe's. And it really broke my heart because I was like, man, I thought this would be the place I'd live the next four years and then go to major and I'd stay in Chicago for the rest mm. of my life. But it wasn't. That wasn't a part of God's plan. And he was like, okay, we're going up to SJV. I was like, who or what is SJV? <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. But the Lord... Uh, you know, reminded me of the words of John Paul II, do not be afraid uh, when love requires sacrifice. And the Lord was requiring me to sacrifice my hometown, Chicago, where I loved being. He's like, come up here and I'm going to give you so much more. And I was like, okay, God, here we go. And so here we are, you know, this is my third year up here at SJV and I have loved every single second of it. The good and the academics and the hardships and everything. Mm -hmm. This has just been such a blessing, such a grace. Wow. So what would you say to someone um, who's considering the seminary or might feel called like what what advice would you give them I would say be patient with yourself because the Lord is going to start doing things in your heart that you're like no 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 let's let's stop Um, but he's just going to continue to work and he's going to give you so much peace and joy and just be obedient to it. Um, Father Kelly, our, our rector recently, uh, just you know, gave obedience to Archbishop Hebda. And then the four maidens here just gave obedience to Father Kelly as the new rector. And he, he kind of gave a little like talk after the four maidens did that. And he said, there's a freedom in obedience. Mm. And I see that as well. Uh, yes, the seminary has called so much out of me. And as, as um, we say to somebody like you come here to die so that Christ can rise in you and, and I would say just be open to that be ob- obedient to his will because yes it's going to be hard and it's going to be tough there's no denying that mm-hmm. but what you receive you receive sevenfold, 77 fold back right so yeah just be patient with yourself and what the Lord is doing in your own heart and just be obedient to that yeah when when was the moment that it switched for you from being something that was like scary Mm -hmm. to be called i don't know if you experienced that but kind of like pushing it away yeah and then where you actually desired to like go what was this what switched in that it was all through high school like like i said i i I wanted to leave the faith i left the faith um but the lord is still working in my heart 
he was still, you know, putting people in my life that was like, you'd make a great priest. Or they were calling me to things that, you know, a, a priest would do. And I was like, no, I don't want to do this. This is, you know, too much. Like, I, my mom wanted me to do youth ministry. And I did it out of, like, spite. Um, but the Lord gave so many graces and gave me so many opportunities. Um, he, he gave me the, you know, ability to talk in public and, you know, give talks at retreats. Mm. I received that youth ministry, but I didn't want to do it. Um, and I just kept pushing it away. And I was like, I want to date. I want to get married. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when it kind of flipped and when it switched was that Kairos retreat mm. when, when I got to experience adoration in a very real way of the what love. does Kairos mean yeah Kairos means I should know this <laughs> wait <laughs> isn't it the Lord's time I think so I should I'm know not that. sure but it sounds cool I know we say the Lord's time a lot at Kairos okay but um what what was the content of the yeah retreat? for a lot of so I went to an all guys high school and for a lot of the guys that was the, the like last big thing for Catholic stuff. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of guys after high school they leave the faith and they get to college and you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were like, okay, let's just kind of, you know, we'll go to mass every day. Um, really, in a way, they showed us our identities as beloved sons. Now they didn't like put it out like that, right? But they showed us that we are loved by our family members, by our friends. Right? We would um, our. our moms and dads will write letters to us and then they read those letters out loud mm. and you just realize how much you're loved and then we go into like adoration and we have the opportunity to read all these other letters and then we do a little bit of Lexio Divina and we see the Father's own love for us and when I realized how much the Father loved me I was like what am I scared of? There is nothing left to be worried about because no matter where the Lord calls me Right, what do you want to do with my life? Whether you want to send me to Minnesota, and here we are, um, or if you wanted to keep me in Chicago, right? He still loved me in all of that. And that was when it became like a desire also, when I realized the Father's love for me. Wow. Yeah, it's already starting to feel like it's going to get cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. Yeah. yeah.